Good morning. Welcome to Unity Church of Clearwater. My name is Maria D. Ree, and I have been a member of the board. I'm a volunteer and currently the finance manager. Um, prayer is the heart of our Unity ministry. Prayer request forms are found in the lobby and in the prayer room down the central hallway and may be placed in the prayer request box here or in the prayer chapel. These requests are kept in confidence and lifted up in spiritual consciousness for at least 30 days by our ministry team. Now let us affirm divine guidance, healing, prosperity, freedom, and peace for each and every name that has been shared as we begin our worship with the reading of today's daily word lesson. At this time, please silence your cell phones, take a deep breath, as we become centered. Many find God in the silence. Let us be still now for a time and help them in their quest. Prosperity, Sunday, July 19th. God is my source for all I need and desire. Can we say that together? God is my source for all I need and desire. I may be stuck in my thinking about prosperity. I may think of it as possessing things like a home, car, or fashionable clothing. Charles Fillmore called this material prosperity. He taught us about a more rewarding kind of prosperity, spiritual prosperity. We receive this gift when we understand God is our inexhaustible, always present source of all we need and desire. Spiritual prosperity appears in many ways, only some of which are things. I am blessed by answered prayers, loving relationships, and the contentment of a job well done. I know God is my source for all I need and desire. Peace of mind is mind as I embrace spiritual prosperity. And from Matthew chapter 6, verses 20 and 21, store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes. For wherever your treasure is, there your heart will also be.
morning, everyone. Welcome to Unity. Please stand as you're able and join us in singing House Built on Love. My name is Letty, and I'd love to welcome you along with Dieter right after the service at the base of the stairs. We realize that we are not here by accident, but by divine appointment. So this is the day that you've finally decided to come to Unity for the first time. We really want to welcome you. Let's have our light bringers come forward and face the congregation with me. Face the music, right? <laughs> What a good-looking congregation you are, and so delighted to be here. We love you. We do. Wow. As we begin, we want the fir very first announcement to, that you hear here to be a call to work. Yes, because <laughs> we have gotten a new cart for the Unity Cafe, and the wheels have to go on the scaffolding that's in the courtyard. And if anybody feels led to help with those things, please let Jeff know, or Russ, or Rob. Now, our first time guests, do we have a job for you? Your job today is to bless others around you and to let them bless and welcome you. If this is your first visit to Unity, will you give our light bringers a big wave so they can find you and bring you a welcome bag? There's some folks right there. Yes, very good, good. We're delighted. Welcome to Unity. 
And now I'd like to call on Cynthia Mackey. She is the co-president of leadership development on our board of directors and our prayer chaplain. Welcome, Cynthia. Thank you. I wanted to say, yes, I wanted to say that if you check, I wanted to say <laughs> that if you check your e-newsletter or your printed reflections, you'll see details about events at the Peace Cottage on the corner here, Tai Chi and Yoga and 12 Step, and you're welcome. to mention our Tuesday Wings group, Women Inspiring New Growth Spiritually, uh, welcomes you to join them with a brown bag lunch at 11.30 to 1 o'clock. The Reverend Phyllis DeBella is leading an inspiring discussion on the game of life and how to play it by Florence Scoville Shin. Information we all need. Oh yes, absolutely. And Wednesday evening, Phyllis is also leading a half hour of real power in our meditation service from 7 to 7.30, silent unity style. It's a beautiful experience. And during that time from 6 to 7.30, our teen night meets in the youth wing. So kids are welcome. And we do have some awesome teens. Watch for their great video after our service with scenes of our YOU from the spring gathering um, that was held at Unity of Sebring, Florida. All ages of teens and adults can stop by the info center today, Finvo counter, excuse me, today, it's a center, yeah. um, <laughs> to get more information and register for the To Infinity and Beyond summer conference that we're hosting next week, July 26th through the 31st at the Hilton Gardens Hotel in Tampa and here at Unity Church of Clearwater. So hurry and register today. That's right, this is the week to do that. During our summer conference, the teens are going to create neat murals in our courtyard. I hope you'll visit that courtyard and see the new sunshade. We chose blue because they told us it would give us great shade and wouldn't show dirt. And that's really the guideline for most of our wardrobe. That's true. And blue, and blue skies. And blue skies. We wanted to give that positive message of blue skies. So thanks to volunteers, Suze Moore, Mitch Egan, Don Donahue's Gulf Atlantic Building, contractors, Russ Hammock, and all others who are helping to make this possible, giving their time, treasure, and talent to this project. And by the way, check the awards at the bookstore counter for levels of giving in support of this conference. It means so very much. This is an investment in the lives of kids that shape our tomorrows, and we are proud of them. We are just beyond our halfway point, really approaching the two-thirds point of uh, the full fulfillment of our goal in sponsoring this conference. Donors, claim your awards at the bookstore counter. And don't forget that the bake offering held in the cafe this morning, well, all the rewards that come from that, all love offerings given, Jenny made cupcakes, will help support the conference. So be sure to get some. Take them home today. And uh, thanks to all of our volunteers who serve in our cafe in youth ministry. And if you serve in youth ministry and other places, you can receive a free CD or DVD service of the day, of, of the service the day that you serve. Um, the bookstore on Sundays and also during the week in the bookstore and in the office and with housekeeping. Our next Express Saturday is uh, 9 to 11 for housekeeping in our uh, in our church home because we rely on volunteers to help us and that's this coming Saturday July 25th and there will be donuts we do love food around here yeah. and also I want to put in a little plug well no actually a big one for our two nursery folks we have two wonderful ladies Teresa very experienced very experienced yes Teresa. Uh, Stacy and Teresa Teresa and um, they are they're awaiting our Unity babies. They have cleaned the entire area. Everything is spotless and spick and span, and they are just waiting with open arms. So please bring on the babies. We love those babies. There's a seminar by Greg Sanderson coming up on Saturday, August 8th at the Peace Cottage. We'll tell you more about that as we get closer to the event. And now we're just grateful that you're here. Thanks, Cynthia. God bless you. 
As we begin this morning, let's speak our opening statements, become centered in prayer consciousness. They're here on the screen, together. There is only one presence and one power, everywhere and always. God, the good, omnipotent, and God is love. And let's speak this word aloud together. In our unity of purpose, we are guided by infinite wisdom, renewed by abundant life, and prospered by divine love. And in the silence, we hold a loving thought of prayer for the father of Keir Walton, who made transition this week. We've told Keir and his family that we're with them in spirit. We see his father at peace and their hearts comforted. We also join in prayer with all people everywhere whose dear ones have experienced conflict this week in the military station, in various places around the globe, in families and in their hearts. Let there be peace and healing and let it begin right now and right here with all of us. Thank you, God, that this is happening right now. Amen. Let us speak aloud together in our unity way, our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us sing our way into meditation together.
openness, healing, generosity, acceptance. I am. Wherever there seems to be an obstacle in my life, in my world, I see love melting down the walls of resistance. There is no fear, no resistance here. I am love. I know that God loves me, that God's will for me is good and only good. I have come to the place at last of openness to receive God's guidance, humility to receive God's teaching, willingness to let God love me into a fuller life. I am willing, Lord. I am willing. Not my will, but yours be done. Your will of good, of wholeness, of completion, prosperity, and harmony, not only for me, but for all people everywhere. We are willing. And so it is. And so we let it be. Amen. seldom take the opportunity to do, my son, the Reverend Dieter Randolph, Minister of Education, who spoke last week at Unity Church in Orlando, and of course, as always, receives a standing ovation there. They told him they sold more CDs of his talk last Sunday there than they had ever sold before. So please welcome our star, yeah. Dieter Randolph. Of course, those CDs were Dolly Parton's greatest hits, but still, still, something to be proud of. Thank you, everyone. I'm so happy to be here at home with my family. There's no place else on earth like this. Let's begin our service by consulting our primary textbook, the Bible. The quotes will be appearing on the screen any moment now, and I'll read the quotes, and then let's read the response together. Jesus said, Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Together, I now make the decision 
to turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understood God. And in the silence. Show me the path I should walk, for to you I entrust my life. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your kind spirit guide me on ground that is level. Together, my will is my thoughts and my words, which shape my reality by the law of attraction. And in the silence. In your plans for us, sacrifice, you do not want. But ears open to obedience you gave me. So I said, here I am. Your commands for me are written in the scroll. To do your will is my delight. My God, your law is in my heart. Together, divine spirit is directing me now. I am free from yesterday and the mistakes of the past. All things are made brand new. And in the silence. Jesus said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Together. I will to let God be God. It feels so good to know that all is well and unfolding as it should. And let that truth be true in the silence. Let us continue our healing time as we listen to our special music.
The quote goes, we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, you've heard that one before. It's popular. We walk by faith and not by sight. It's one of those things, one of those fundamental truths that when you say it, it just makes you feel a little bit better even if you don't know exactly what it means. It just sounds good, doesn't it? You could use it at the end of almost anything. Well, you know, this thing happened in the news. Well, we walk by faith and not by sight. It's one of those quotes that sounds good. It makes it sound like you know what you're talking about. I recommend it. But there, the reason why that's a powerful thing to say, we walk by faith and not by sight. The reason that that's so powerful, so important, the reason it makes you feel good, just the words make you feel good, is because it speaks to a fundamental truth of how the universe works, how you and I work, how life works. We walk by faith and not by sight means that the things that happen to us have their root in something invisible. It means something that you know already. Because when you really think back at the story of your life, Think about how many times you did something or felt something. You took some kind of an action. You made some kind of a move. Not based on external data and proof. But because something inside of you knew. And I guarantee you, all of the best things about you. All of the most amazing adventures. All of the most beautiful experiences started in that place. You and I and everyone else in this room and everyone else watching on the internet and everyone else on this planet really lives their life based not on external appearances but by something that happens on the inside. And if you really think about the story of your life, you know I'm right. And you're proving it every day. And Scripture is full of examples of that kind of thing. The Bible is a book about that. The Bible is a book about have some faith. Don't be conformed to the ways of this world, it says. Over and over again, Jesus says, If you have faith, you can say to the mountain, Be up and cast into the sea, and it will be done for you. And that sounds pretty good, because I don't know about you, but I've got some mountains in my life could use some movement. You know? If you want it out of your way, if you want to get somewhere, if you want it to happen, whatever it is for you, you can't. Get there through external means. You can't get there by the things that you can see. They're already done. To move forward into the future, we have to look at something that can't be seen with the eye. We walk by faith and not by sight means that everything that happens starts with something invisible and that's where we do our job. And that sounds really good. It sounds so good. To make you show up on a Sunday morning. Most of you could have slept in. It makes it sound so good that people come back. And there are people in churches all over the world right now working on this faith idea. And I'm so glad because it's the beginning of everything. But it can feel a little bit tricky too. 
I have this wonderful privilege of getting to stand up in front of you and talk about this stuff all the time. I have this wonderful honor to get to teach these classes and write the stuff that I write and work on the stuff that I work on. And so, so often people come to me with that question. The question of, how can I get me a little more faith? How can I get a little more? It sounds good. I read the outside of the box. It sounds really good. How can I get me a little bit more faith? As though faith were a thing that you can buy. And I don't blame people for that. I mean, the whole rest of life is teaching people that if you want to be better and smarter and stronger, if you want people to like you, if you want to get dates or whatever it is, you better buy this thing, apply this cream. In five easy payments, it could be yours. <laughs> right? A big hunk of how society and life and culture works has to do with this idea of some commodity that you don't have that you better get before midnight tomorrow. And so it's no wonder that some people think that's how faith works. And they, they show up at church and they say, how can I get more faith? I'm at like 10% faith. Can I get to 20 or 25 or 30% faith? Is there a way I can up my faith quotient, my FQ? That's going to come back and bite me, isn't it? Um, <laughs> But people say, can I get me a little bit more faith? Here's the thing. Prayer doesn't start with what you say. Prayer starts with what you see. Life doesn't start with what you say. It starts with what you see. It doesn't matter what kind of fancy words you use. It doesn't matter what church you go to. It doesn't matter if you're in Clearwater or India or Tibet or Vatican City or Pinellas Park. It doesn't matter where you are. If you have an idea that the universe is a certain way, if you see life a certain way, no one can talk you into any other experience. If you see the world as a place where there's only a little bit of good, you are going to have a life that feels like there's only a little bit of good. No one can talk you out of that. Prayer begins with what you see. And so the job we have is not to magically make you better. You're already a child of God. The job that we have together is to work on seeing the world like God sees it. Prayer begins with what you see. And so the truth is you are already at 100% faith. The tank is full. It's a matter of what you see. Do you see a little bit of good and like 90% not so good? You will have a life that mirrors your perception. So what can you do to see a little bit more clearly? Not with these eyes, but with that heart. What can you do to see a little bit more clearly that wherever you go, God is happening? That's the trick. That's the question. That's how this stuff works. People say, how can I get more faith? But you already have faith. It's like saying, how can I get more God? How can I get God to show up in my life? Well, it doesn't work that way. It's a little bit like saying, how can I get gravity to show up in my life? All you got to do is let go. Don't always recommend that approach. But God, love, truth, beauty, all of the things that you know in your heart to be true are already true and as true as they can be. You don't need more of that. You need to see what's there. We don't need to spend another moment, another word, another thought trying to make God show up. You don't need to do anything to invoke God, to make God appear, to have some kind of muscle exercise you do to make faith happen. Faith is just what you believe, so ask yourself what you believe. And decide if that's what you want to have more of in your life or not. That's the thing. But you know that, don't you? Because when you look at your life, like I said a moment ago, you see that faith is already working. Everything that we experience has its roots in something invisible. If you go back far enough, if you go from one thing to the cause of that thing, to the cause of that thing, to the cause of that thing, sooner or later, you make that leap. 
and you realize that everything you experience, everything you own, every dollar in your bank account, every relationship you ever had, every possession, every everything, has its roots in something invisible if you take it back far enough, if you're disciplined enough in your science. That's where we do our work. Even the most materialistic stuff of all, even that dollar bill that seems like that's the end-all, be-all for some people, says, in God we trust on it. Think about that. The thing that seems like the most materialistic thing of all is pointing to something else. If you look at your dollar bill, it says, remember, there's something invisible behind this. When you think about it, What's really different about that piece of paper than any other piece of paper except your faith? Faith is what makes the whole machine go. So what shall we put our faith in? What do you want to have more of in your life? Your life is a never-ending description of how faith works. Every moment, if you look back at the story of your life, every moment, and you have had wonderful, beautiful examples where you remembered who you were and life worked, and you've had wonderful, terrible examples where you went kicking and screaming and you realized, oh, I was so afraid of that thing and I gave all of my power to that negative thing and I experienced the negative thing. What do you know? One way or another, every story of your life is a story of faith being manifest. Let's work on good stories. You don't need to look hard for proof. That's not the problem. The problem is doing something about it. Like I said, people ask me questions all the time. And one of the questions I get more than any other question, more than any other question, even questions like, when will you grow up? (laughs) Are you wearing that? Even more than those questions. Here's the question I get more than any other. Why do I ever doubt Why do I ever doubt? Okay, good, I showed up at church, I've read the books, I get it, I understand that God is happening all the time, and when I look back at my life, I've got these great stories, but over and over again, I get to the end of some experience when I was so afraid, and then it worked out, and I said, why do I ever doubt? Don't I, when when will I pick up the clues that life is giving me? People say some flavor of that to me all the time. I get that question repeatedly. People say, why why do I ever doubt? Because I'm putting myself through such hardship and it always works out in the end sooner or later. Sometimes it takes a while. But I'm convinced it would be a quicker journey if I just remembered at the beginning, why do I ever doubt? I've got so much proof. Am I just stubborn? Am I missing the point? Is God throwing me a curveball? Have I been no good? Well, you know my answer to those kinds of questions. I know whose child you are. And I want you to know that no matter what you have been through before this moment, you deserve love. You deserve happiness. You deserve ease. Because you know what? The world has got stuff for you to do. No more waiting around and no more beating yourself up. You've got a job to do. You've got a world to help. That wing and globe symbol of unity is a symbol of us all helping each other. So let's get good at this stuff. Why do I ever doubt? Because I've got so much proof. But you know, proof's a funny thing, isn't it? Proof is something that has already happened, right? Proof is something that was manifest, some evidence of past stuff that happened. Proof is something in the past, something that's already real. It's a thing. You can point to stuff. That's proof, that's proof, that's proof. Can that lead you to faith? Because if proof is visible and faith is something invisible, maybe you're not supposed to be looking at it anyway. One of the problems that people get into is worshiping something. So what's the difference between some golden idol somewhere and patting yourself on the back for something that you did a long time ago. You can get really caught up in the stuff that happened, but maybe that doesn't get you where you need to go anyway. Maybe it's not about what happened then. Maybe it's about letting go of that entirely. Proof isn't going to help you. 
get to that place of invisibility. Some kind of a leap is required. And so the question becomes, how do I make that leap? Let me put that a different way. Faith sees something that has not yet happened. But through the power of faith, the power that creates the universe, it takes this invisible potentiality and makes it into some physical, real thing, experience, relationship, so on. Faith is the power that takes the invisible potential and makes it real, actual, right? That's the, that's the machine. But in the process, when I have a physical, real thing, I have taken the power out of it. The bread won't rise anymore. You're allowed to eat it, and it's wonderful. I like bread. There's a bake sale today. Didn't even do that on purpose. It's great that that thing happened, whatever it was, but that's not where the power is. You know what I mean? And that's why in unity, you don't need any magic gear. You don't need a special necklace. You don't need a special outfit. There's no special words that we say. It doesn't, none of that matters to us. We respect it when other people do it. We say, good for you. And God is everywhere, so God is in that too. But for us... There is no power in stuff. All it can do is remind you of something else. Just like the dollar bill says, in God we trust. There's no power in the things that you have, whether they're wonderful or whether they're terrible. It is time for us to be free from the past and the mistakes of the past. And it is time for us to be free from the successes of the past too. Because tomorrow is going to be even better if you let it. Apparently, I got the right answer. Let me put that a different way. What makes you think that proof is going to change your heart? Think think about that with me. What makes you think that proof is ever going to change your heart? I don't know about you, but I've had plenty of examples of times when I had all the proof in the world and it couldn't convince me of anything. You ever been on a roller coaster? Every time I get on the roller coaster and they strap me down and I realize what an idiot I am. I willingly did this. I paid to do it. And they strap me in and the thing goes up the hill. And I realize that I'm a fool. And it doesn't stop. And I start talking myself into being okay by going over the evidence. Here's what I'm talking about. And I think, well, these restraints are quite solid. Feels good. And I think about how surely they have employees whose job it is to make sure everything's been greased properly and everything they check. They they do that, don't they? They check. And I check the person next to me. It's always Jenny. And she says, yes, it's fine. Shut up. And And I think, well, gosh, you know, if something bad happened, Disney would be sued. And they don't want to be sued. It's in their best interest to protect me. So everything's okay, right? Everyone around me is having a marvelous time. And I am consulting the evidence. And it doesn't matter what I say to myself. I'm still scared. The fun happens when you let go, right? You know, just as well as I do, that you have plenty of examples of having all of the data in the world and it not mattering to your heart, whether it's negative, like a roller coaster. You can go over the finances and worry how it's going to work out. And you go, wait, it's going to be okay because of X, Y, Z, but you still worry. Everybody has those negative experiences. Let's get done with them. And everybody has those positive experiences too because when you're in love with somebody, it don't matter what the facts are. When my wife was my daughter's age, she had my daughter already. We shouldn't have gotten together. We were way too young. When you love somebody, it don't matter. The data don't matter. It works out or it doesn't. But you go forward without evidence. Because we walk by faith and not by sight, and the proof has nothing to do with it. If you want your life to work, don't worry about the way things look, whether they're good or bad, and start thinking about what you need to do to make that leap. I'll put that another way, because I like putting things another way. If you love somebody, 
You've got great stories about the things that you did together in cute ways. Maybe you met in a cute way. Maybe you gave each other flowers or candy or something cute happened and, and you did this thing and you've got the photograph to look at and that's great, but that's not why it's love. It's not why it's love. It doesn't matter how many cute stories you have. The reason you know that you're going to be together tomorrow has nothing to do with the cute date you went on last week. And in fact, if all you do is go over those stories and go over the evidence and try to prove to yourself that it's going to be okay tomorrow, you might need a counselor. The love happens on a different level. Love has nothing to do with what you did before. Love has to do with something more fundamental. It has to do with something in your heart. You know what it is? Love is a verb. The missing ingredient is action. You do something. You move forward. Maybe you don't have all the answers. Maybe you don't know how it's all supposed to work out. But you do something. That's how it works. Love is like that. And I think everything is like that. Faith is like that. You move. I always say, if it's love, you move your butt. If it's faith, you do something about it. The missing ingredient is action. We are told in Scripture, wherever you place the sole of your foot will be yours. Sounds good. I like that. It's poetic. Wherever you place, the sole of your foot will be yours. And the truth is the Bible is full of quotes like that. Jesus said that God is our Father. You've heard me quote that before because I like it. Over and over again, the story of the prodigal son is your story. Over and over again, that promised land is promised. Over and over again, wherever you place the sole of your foot will be yours. And that feels good. It's nice to sit in that and just think about that and feel like, you know what? Okay, God is my Father. I am taken care of. I don't know how, but that's, that's the point as I don't know how. I'm not asking God for proof anymore. I'm just going to sit in that and it feels good, but I don't always feel that. Maybe you don't always feel that. Sometimes the bills come in. Sometimes stuff happens and it's hard to remember wherever you place the sole of your foot shall be yours. It's tricky. And it's hard to write that in the memo line of a check. still true but here's the thing in that statement in that job description because that's what it is think about what's being said I'll say it again wherever you place the sole of your foot shall be yours is that an admonition to sit still are we being told just hang on and just sit in that knowledge isn't that nice to know no wherever you place the sole of your foot means you've got to go walk you must claim it. You can't put the sole of your feet down anywhere if you're sitting down. In other words, the way to do this faith stuff is to do this faith stuff. The way to move forward in life is to move forward. It's okay if you don't have all the answers. That's God's job. In fact, your answers aren't what's required. I don't know about you, but every time I ever got in trouble, it wasn't God doing it. It was my dumb idea. Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. What can you do to get out of the way and start moving today? The whole universe is telling you to move forward. The only thing that's telling you to step back, to hold still, is some kind of fear, some kind of ego, some kind of something that you don't need anymore. You are being called. You are being pulled. And I bet if you really think about it, you know something that you can do. You know something that you're supposed to do. I'm not asking for big things. I'm not telling you to quit your job, for example. I am telling you that maybe it's time to start living like that job can't tell you who you are. There's something that you can do today to prove to yourself that this stuff works. God already knows. Everybody else in this room already knows. You have a room full of cheerleaders and brothers and sisters and a life full of people who want you to succeed because you're required. What can you do today 
Get your ego out of the way. Get your fear out of the way. Get your whatever out of the way. You deserve happiness. What can you do today to move forward in peace? And on purpose. Prayer starts with what you see. And what I see before me is beautiful people. Prayer starts with what you see. And what you see is potential. Prayer starts with what you see. What do you see today? What will you see tomorrow? Are you open to being surprised? The time is now. There's something that only you can do. There's a truth that only you can tell. And the time to do it is right now. Now we work out our own salvation by moving forward. And maybe that happens because you've been inspired about something. That's great. And maybe that happens because you're so tired of being held back. That's great too. One way or another, you and I are moving forward to a place of freedom. Because after all, freedom is a choice. Thank you very much. Let's pray. Infinite Lord, wise and loving Mother, Father God, we give thanks for this way and this truth and this life. We don't need any more evidence. We feel it in our hearts. We live in love and we move forward in faith, in peace and on purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us now take our opportunity to give. The blessing is... On the screen, let's say it together. Together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Father, Mother, God. So it is and so it does. Amen. Good morning, everyone.
What a wonderful experience this service is. We bless this offering of love and substance. We consecrate it to the glory of God and to the good of all humankind. Thank you, God, for this church and the love that enfolds it. In Jesus' name, amen. And now let's sing in our youth ministry. This little light of mine. ministry. We look forward with them to our summer conference and along with them we invite you to take a look at the bake offering. We don't call it a sale because we invite your love offerings according to the appreciation in your heart and we know that the baked goods are delicious. So we invite you now to rise with us. Just one, one moment before First. we do. I was going to do that. <laughs> Certain people have worked so hard. We all have worked hard to love and bless these teens, but we, we really felt strongly that we really wanted to acknowledge our own Russ Hammock for working so hard to put together our sound system for the upcoming conference. He, Russ has put together the sound system that we're going to be taking with us to the summer conference, and so our teens would like to give Russ our YOU blessing. Together? Yay. Russ, we love you, we bless you, and we truly appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. Love you, love you, really love you, Amen. Amen. And to all who have offered to sponsor a child to be part of this team conference, we're so grateful. You're making a difference in lives and, and in our church. We're deeply grateful for you. So now we invite you to rise with us as you're able. Let's extend our hearts and our hands. This is the generation in which the world is changing. We speak our prayer for protection for all people everywhere, together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And now let's join hands together and sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Let it begin with me. Have a wonderful, willing week.